The INFJ is the best known personality type in the typology community. I think there are two main reasons for this. First, C.G. Young was an INFJ, and therefore the foundations of typology, though modified by other personalities, come from an INFJ's preferences of thought. For instance, the deductive nature of the theory appeals to the INFJ's introverted thinking. Its interest in objectively understood human values and motivations appeals to extroverted feeling, and its overall compelling and contemplative nature appeals to introverted intuition. Thus, INFJs are the most likely to be interested in Jungian typology and have gained a considerable presence in the field. Second, and probably because of this presence, INFJs have commonly been described and portrayed as the most interesting, mysterious, deep, mystically intelligent, and according to many sources, the most rare personality type. Without ever explicitly saying it, or ever consciously intending it, this plethora of praise often gives the researcher the feeling that the INFJ is the most desirable and gifted personality type. The stereotypical aspects of the INFJ I have seen, whether accurate or not, are as follows. They are often described as very caring and compassionate. They are very private people and are very difficult to get to know, making them mysterious. They are supposedly characterized by a very deep and complex nature, impossible to fully comprehend in a lifetime, often benefiting from therapy to help untangle their thoughts. They are unusually empathetic, having an uncanny understanding of others' emotions and intentions, nearly to the degree of being psychic. They are wise, deep, soft-spoken, but charismatic prophets with multitudes boiling within their rich psyche. Some, in reaction to this essentially godlike image, have gone the other route and considered INFJs to be characteristically flawed, overly metaphysical, overly emotional, overly idealistic, and overall neurotic cranks. Neither of these descriptions really gives a very insightful image into what really makes an INFJ and INFJ. Both descriptions are too vague and emotionally biased. As with all of these videos, I aim to describe the core of the INFJ profile and the typical INFJ as an individual just as capable or incapable of becoming a hero of the history books as any other personality. As always, let's break down what constitutes the INFJ functionally. They are a judging type, meaning that they prefer extroverted judging and introverted perceiving. This means that they base their judgment criteria on objective outside information, while simply observing and drinking in their subjective information and experiences. You could say that they are more aggressive towards the outside world and more receptive towards their inner experience. Their preferred way of doing this is through extroverted feeling and introverted intuition. Extroverted feeling is accommodating. It adapts to objectively understood values, becoming whatever is appropriate, harmonizing, and overall desirable for a given situation. Meanwhile, introverted intuition is contemplative, in that it has no real interest in reality, but perceives the possibilities of ideas within their own mind, developing more and more compelling and delicious intellectual ideas, theories, and understandings. Third, they are very similar to the ENFJ. Both prefer extroverted feeling and introverted intuition. The INFJ, however, prefers introverted intuition more than extroverted feeling. Nevertheless, they are in some sense the same type, or at least sister types. I personally like to call NFJ types the teachers, because they both develop compelling ideas and understandings of the world and seek to convey these visions to people in an accommodating and objectively desirable and engaging fashion. Of course, teacher is merely a nickname to help me remember the NFJ nature and does not mean NFJs are more likely to have an interest in teaching as a career. 
The INFJ, then, is a, quote, teacher for whom their subjective perceptions and musings hold more importance and interest for them than accommodation. They are primarily concerned with perceiving the possibilities of internal ideas, developing deliciously compelling intellectual insights. The word I like to use to understand the INFJ nature is idealistic. As usual, I mean this in a specific way. As I just said, unlike the ENFJ, whose focus is on communicating and communing with people, the INFJ is focused on discovering intuitive insights. Thus, part of the reason I refer to them as idealistic is because the INFJ is driven to discover the ideal vision of how best to solve problems in society, making them primarily contemplative. Once the ideal comes to them, they attempt to communicate it to the world, but their time and focus and enjoyment is first invested in contemplating the problem before taking action. The combination of introverted intuition and extroverted feeling makes for an interesting characteristic in the INFJ. The INFJ naturally leans towards a holistic philosophy, that is, that the universe, or whatever system they are describing, is so intimately interwoven that one cannot properly understand any individual part without referencing the whole system. This is the result of both introverted intuition's tendency to combine and connect many disparate concepts and centralize information, and extroverted feelings' tendency to sacrifice individuality in favor of an objective standard, thus an interwoven system that can only be understood as a whole. This is the key to the idealistic nature of the INFJ. The INFJ is perfectionistic, or from their perspective, idealistic. They are never satisfied with an incomplete or limited understanding of a subject, and can't rest until every branching idea has been sufficiently accounted for and attached to the same central trunk. They cannot present their vision until they are sure it is complete, with no loopholes, no unexplored implications, and all derivable from a common principle or source. The INFJ always seeks to discover a perfect system that is, in the end, too good to work in this imperfect world. But as Plato himself admitted concerning his Republic, it can make a great reference to strive for and refresh the world with new compelling perspectives. The INFJ is also famously empathetic and emotionally sensitive. They have an uncanny ability to perceive the emotions and motivations of others, and even be unhealthily affected by them. Seeing all people as inseparably interconnected, they play the part by intuitively seeing through others' social barriers, or at least feeling that they can do so. This can give people the impression that they are psychic, However, while the INFJ's insight will be mysterious, inexplicable, and creepily accurate and deep, it's usually not immediately practical or scientifically reliable, because the INFJ cannot point to any specific facts from which they derived their hunches about people. Concerning their compassion, Plato allegedly said, Be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. The INFJ's concern is not out of principle, but out of their empathetic experience of others' suffering. Their compassion comes from walking in others' shoes. David Kiersey nicknamed them the counselors for this reason, because they don't only listen, but feel to some degree what other people are saying. Combined with this is a typically courteous, amiable, genuine, and soft-spoken manner reminiscent of a therapist, seer, or religious leader. They can develop a gentle or even prophetic charisma with people because of their insight and kindness. Simply put, people generally enjoy their company. However, they are often surprised when the INFJ expresses their visions with such intense passion. This is because the nickname counselor is not so far off, and that the INFJ enjoys and is notorious for playing the social role of therapist or psychologist, in that the soul-bearing is always done towards them and is never sufficiently reciprocated. It is only with the INFJ's most intimate inner circle that they intentionally exchange thoughts and feelings. It's not uncommon for people who are not in this inner circle to suddenly wake up and realize that they really don't know anything about the INFJ who they considered a good friend. Meanwhile, those friends in the inner circle may make a strange discovery. Introverted intuition is not a judging function, but a perceiving function. 
it is not morally based, in the sense that it does not form criteria of what is an acceptable ideal or not. Rather, it plays with potentials and ideas until it synthesizes one delicious theory. However, the INFJ does not realize that it is fully responsible for the theory's creation. It feels that it has observed it in the world, when in fact it synthesized it within the mind. Even without being able to offer specific data, it still considers itself an empiricist, basing its conclusions on objective observations. The point here is that the INFJ accepts their vision on the basis of how complete and intellectually delicious it is, and not whether it adheres to certain moral principles, which is the domain of introverted feeling. The INFJ's visions can be disconcertingly amoral, idiosyncratic, or upheaving, without the INFJ feeling the implications for themselves or others. They merely present the idea as the final product of their internal searching, happy to have found such a beautiful concept, not factoring themselves sufficiently into the equation. Thus, INFJs can be notorious for making very controversial or even disturbing statements. For instance, Plato's proposal of an apparently totalitarian republic, or Spinoza's denial of free will. Both of these ideas embody a fascinating and internally consistent concept, but may not have a very practical application in reality. In fact, Plato's attempt to create the republic in reality failed miserably. Because the INFJ does not naturally relate themselves to their vision, and does not realize its entirely psychic conception. Introverted thinking serves as the INFJ's tertiary function. It plays a primary role in the INFJ's perfectionism, seeking to discover all of the necessary deductions from an intuitive idea and ensure its structure is logically sound. The INFJ is not immediately concerned with achieving goals, as the INTJ is with extroverted thinking, but finds greater satisfaction in ensuring the logical integrity of their system. Likewise, the INFJ's inner world is ruled by cold logic, despite their projective warmth, whilst the INTJ seems cold outwards, but within burns a passionate furnace. Finally, the INFJ's Achilles heel is extroverted sensation, their inferior function rendered primitive by the sophistication of dominant introverted intuition. Therefore, the INFJ's perception of concrete reality and facts themselves is extremely unreliable. While in contemplation, they may pass by fields of cattle and not notice a single one, or they may know someone for many years but have only a vague idea of what they look like, leaving out hair color, facial features, or specific height. And then, with sudden vividness, their extroverted sensation is reawakened and they are surprised by something that everyone else noticed hours ago. As far as their ideals go, this can become a problem when important facts are left completely unnoticed while the INFJ recedes into pure contemplation on the limited data that inspires them. A less comical effect of their inferior extroverted sensation in the INFJ is their unease with sensual experiences. When they give some focus to extroverted sensation, enjoyable physical sensations become especially vivid for them. Food, drink, thrills, art, music, sex, all of these can present overwhelming sensuality for the INFJ, tempting them to overindulgence. To fight the temptation, INFJs very often guard against sensuality. They lock carpe diem away and fear living life to the fullest. So, in summary, the INFJ is idealistic, contemplating how to help people by developing a holistic, internally perfect system based on amoral intuitive perception. They are known for their natural empathy and one-sided therapeutic relationships. Unfortunately, they struggle to pay attention to the actual world around them and are easily overwhelmed by sensual experiences, either overindulging or never indulging. The best list of example INFJs can be found at celebritytypes.com and includes Plato, Carl Jung, Mahatma Gandhi, Ludwig Wittgenstein, Fyodor Dostoevsky, Barack Spinoza, Adolf Hitler, David Fincher, Al Pacino, Kate Blanchett, Tilda Swinton, and George Harrison. Thanks for watching, and to all the INFJs out there, thanks for your compassion, insight, and game-changing ideals.